Okay, I have a question for you. What was one of the coolest differences between Sonic and other platformers during the 90s? Well, one trait I always noticed right off the bat is the fact that Sonic the Hedgehog always had more variety in its setting. Super Mario World and Donkey Kong Country were amazing games at the time, but there's no denying that a lot of the levels in those games shared the same visuals or level aesthetics. There is nothing inherently wrong about that, but one of the things that made Sonic the Hedgehog so unique and interesting was that each and every one of his levels were all uniquely made with new level design, level aesthetics, enemies, gimmicks, and the list goes on. While Sonic may have not had the quantity of levels that Donkey Kong Country or Super Mario World had to offer, he certainly and most definitely had the quality to make up for it. So today, I thought it'd be pretty fun to rank every single one of these zones on a tier list, and eventually deciding which zone will be the best Sonic zone of all time. However, there's a few ground rules. Number one, I am only ranking zones from classic Sonic games, so I will not be ranking any Game Gear games or any Dim Sonic titles. I am strictly ranking zones from the four classic Sonic games on the Sega Genesis and Sonic Mania. If I ranked any more zones than that, this video would be way too long. Number two, small story related zones such as Sky Chase or Doomsday Zone will not be included due to them being too short and not really having any level design to them. They are mainly there for story purposes and that's why they will be ignored in this video. And finally, number three, this is all my personal opinions. I'm going to drop a lot of hot takes in this video and just know that I'm not speaking definitively. If you enjoy the zones that I don't like or vice versa, there is no problem with that. Also, just a side note, my opinions have changed quite a bit since my original top 10 video on ranking Sonic zones, so this video is still very much relevant. There is some new rankings in this list. Anyways, with that all out of the way, let us begin. Starting off the D tier, we have Labyrinth Zone from Sonic the Hedgehog 1. This is, in my opinion, what I consider to be the worst classic Sonic Zone of all time. I don't think this is much of a surprise to many of you since Labyrinth Zone tends to be a very controversial zone in the franchise, and it's very easy to understand why that's the case. Labyrinth Zone is the antithesis of what a Sonic Zone should strive to be. It has no slopes to gain speed or momentum, slow moving platforms, very punishing level design, terrible enemy placements, and to top it all off, the zone has three levels that are almost all completely underwater. Which means that you will essentially be walking in slow motion for the entirety of this zone. And since there are no slopes to gain momentum through, the skill ceiling for Labyrinth Zone is very small. So unless you are a professional speedrunner, there is no getting away from moving slow in this zone. That's just something you have to deal with. You are forced to move slowly for a long period of time in a Sonic game and there's nothing you can do about it. Thankfully, through my years of playing Sonic 1, I can easily turn off my brain and go on autopilot when I reach this zone. So it's not as big of an annoyance as it once was for me, but the fact that I have to stop consciously playing the game just so I can get through this zone should be an indication of how poorly designed it is. That is why I'm placing Labyrinth Zone at the bottom of this tier list as the worst Sonic Zone of all time. Next up in the D tier, we have Marble Zone from Sonic the Hedgehog 1. Marble Zone suffers from some of the same issues that Labyrinth Zone suffers from. Marble Zone is, once again, another zone of slow-moving platforms and waiting around. I don't know why the first Sonic the Hedgehog was so fixated on making levels based on normal platforming, but as we can see here, it doesn't work. Sonic as a character and brand is at its best when it's striving to be something new and unique. This type of platforming that Sonic had that involved manipulation of gravity and momentum was never seen before, but more importantly, it was a lot of fun. People liked the uniqueness of Sonic's gameplay because it was fun and exclusive to Sonic. No other platformers played in a similar way to how Sonic played. Sonic was that unique and was that Old. So evidently, when you betray the high-speed momentum-focused gameplay, it will result in a bland experience for the player. 
This is why Marble Zone and Labyrinth Zone feel poorly designed. However, I will say that Marble Zone is a much better zone than Labyrinth due to it not taking place underwater. And because the exploration aspect of Marble Zone is actually kind of fun, I'm not gonna lie. There's plenty of secret pathways and goodies that you can find in Marble Zone, which makes it slightly more bearable than Labyrinth Zone. So with that said, Marble Zone is going to sit at the midway point of D tier. For the last placement of D tier, we have Scrap Brain Zone from Sonic the Hedgehog 1. Scrap Brain Zone, in my opinion, is a very mediocre zone for the first two acts. You see, with Scrap Brain, it's a basic platforming level with a lot of annoyances. You avoid spikes and walls that try to crush you, there are barely any slopes again, you platform on floating blocks, and you try your best to avoid the annoying traps and enemy placements. This altogether makes the zone quite annoying to play through. However, what puts it higher in the D tier is that despite this zone having some annoying quirks to it, it does have a high skill ceiling. With Marble and Labyrinth Zone, it feels like I can't do much to go faster through the level. However, with Scrap Brain, even though the level is quite annoying, at least I feel like I have control over how fast I can move. Now, with this in mind, it would only make sense to put this zone in C tier, or even B tier for that matter, right? Why is it still at D tier? Well, because Sonic 1 always puts three acts or levels in their zones. The first two acts of Scrap Brain Zone are mediocre and could be much higher on the list. But for the third act, instead of just making another Scrap Brain level, they placed in a fourth Labyrinth Zone level. This decision still confuses me to this day. Why would they ever think it's a great idea to bring back an old level into a new zone? Much more important question, why would you bring back Labyrinth Zone? Yeah, I'm sorry to be that guy, but the fact that this one act is here is already enough for me to put in D tier. I'm not sorry. All right, we only have one zone for C tier, and that is Spring Yard Zone from Sonic the Hedgehog 1. You know, looking back at these placements, it's kind of funny when you realize that the four worst zones of Sonic are all from Sonic 1. Can you tell which classic Sonic game is my least favorite? <laughs> well, anyways, Spring Yard Zone is still not what I would consider a high quality zone, but it's much better than the previous three. The main reason why is because there's actually slopes in this level. You know, slopes. The thing that Sonic levels need to be high quality. The slopes are cool and fun to mess around with, however, they don't really push you forward in the level. The slopes are mainly used to propel Sonic up into the air so he can reach the main pathway. Which is cool, but unfortunately this level is plagued with annoying traps and enemy placements, so it's not as cool as the levels in Sonic CD. Actually, speaking of Sonic CD, this level feels like an early concept of what Sonic CD's level design would soon become. I mean, you can see how Green Hill and Starlight Zone directly influence the level design for Sonic the Hedgehog 2, because those levels are constantly pushing you forward with slopes in specific terrain. However, with Spring Yard Zone, the slopes are used as a means of traveling through the verticality of the level design, similar to Sonic CD. It hasn't quite reached the quality of Sonic CD though, because Spring Yard doesn't have the vast branching pathways as Sonic CD has, so it's still a Sonic 1 level at heart. It's also plagued with bad enemy placement, so constantly running into enemies that are conveniently placed at the top of every ledge can get quite annoying. The zone is bad at its worst, and it's mediocre at its best. That's why it will remain sitting at the C tier. Okay, kicking off the B tier, we have Metropolis Zone from Sonic the Hedgehog 2. The B tier of Sonic Zones are what I consider flatline, decent Sonic Zones. They are fun and engaging, however, they suffer from pretty noticeable issues. For Metropolis Zone, it might be a slight surprise to find out that I actually don't hate this zone like how many others do. I still think the zone is a fun experience due to it still being a fast-paced Sonic level with slopes and terrain that constantly pushes you forward. In my book, that puts this zone much further ahead than all of the previous zones on this tier list. However, it still has its fair share of downsides. 
such as this zone being the only zone in Sonic 2 to bring back the three-act structure from Sonic 1. It was very evident from playing Sonic 1 that three acts is just too much. It causes stages to overstay its welcome, and if you happen to not enjoy a zone, you would be stuck having to play three levels of misery in a row. Sonic 2 rectified this by making each zone only contain two acts, which makes it much more sweet and enjoyable. Until Sonic Team said, screw it, I hate Sonic. So now we have three acts again, and the three acts happen to be in the worst Sonic zone of Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Why is it the worst Sonic zone of Sonic 2? Well, because of one issue that is too problematic to ignore. Enemy placements. This has got to be the worst enemy placement I have ever seen in a classic Sonic zone, and that is no exaggeration. Now look, I can dodge the starfish attacks most of the time. I'm good on that. The little crab dudes that extend their arms, they still get me, but I can avoid them at times. However, I still get hit by these dumb slicer stupid enemies when playing this game. There is no avoiding it, man. Who thought it was a great idea to give these guys boomerang type weapons that cover such a large space? These guys suck and they greatly bring down the quality of this zone for me because they slap them everywhere. There's so many of them. That's why Metropolis Zone kinda triggers me. Okay, let's cool down because now we have Wacky Workbench from Sonic CD. Wacky Workbench is actually not that bad. It definitely is the worst zone in Sonic CD. However, it has its fair share of fun. Using the bouncing mechanic and trying to travel through time is fun in this zone. It's just that one of the hologram placements here kinda sucks. I'm talking about this one over here in the level where Metal Sonic is on this tiny looking slope. But trying to land on this slope so you can destroy the hologram is very annoying. I've played through Sonic CD so many times but yet this is the one hologram that I still struggle with. Just for that one hologram that still annoys me to this day, it definitely deserves B tier. Next up we have Sandopolis from Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Something that you will come to find out with this tier list is that while Sonic & Knuckles has some banger stages, it ultimately feels like a slight downgrade when compared to the first half of Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Sandopolis is a perfect example of this in action. The zone is a desert with pyramids, which sounds awesome, except the zone is plagued with some annoying gimmicks. The first annoying gimmick is the ghosts. Basically, if you don't pull this lever every 15 seconds, a bunch of ghosts will come out of nowhere and begin attacking you. That's kind of annoying, especially when you're busy platforming, but they just won't leave you alone. But the more annoying gimmick, in my opinion, is the switches. You have to push a lot of switches to open doors in this zone. There are a lot of switches, so you're going to be doing the same exact action a multitude of times throughout the level. Typically, Sonic gimmicks don't get annoying, but this one in particular just felt a little overboard. However, this level does have a really cool set piece in which Sonic has to race through a platforming segment while trying to avoid the sand that is approaching and trying to crush him. I always found that part of the level to be quite engaging. But other than that, it's a fun level with a few rough edges. Okay, next up we have Flying Battery from Sonic the Hedgehog 3. I think Flying Battery is a decent zone, although it does have its fair share of annoyances. There's a lot of weird enemy placements and annoying spike placements everywhere. Alongside there being a lot of platforms that can easily crush a new player. I can get through this level just fine, but I vividly remember struggling on this level when I was young. There was just so many things you had to watch out for in this set of levels. But it was a pretty alright zone nonetheless. It didn't do anything noteworthy, but it also didn't do anything downright offensive, so it gets a pass. Finally, we have Wing Fortress from Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Wing Fortress is a one-act zone that takes place on an aircraft. This zone, like the others, has many slopes and cool level design that all pushes you forward, but it still has a lot more basic platforming than a typical Sonic zone. Honestly, the best way I could describe this zone is as an evolution of the level design philosophy that we saw in Sonic 1. It has a massive focus on basic platforming here, similar to stages like Labyrinth and Marble Zone. But what Wing Fortress does better is that you're not constrained by slow moving platforms or water sections. You are able to platform as fast as you want. 
thus making this level actually quite enjoyable. Believe it or not, I do love my fair share of basic platforming as long as you give me the chance to play it at my own leisure. If I'm forced to go slow, I'm not gonna like it. Wing Fortress could be an easy A tier zone. However, it only has one act, so that's why I'm placing it at the top of B tier. Starting off the A tier, we have Mushroom Hill Zone from Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Here on out, when it comes to all A tier zones, I consider them to be very good zones with some flaws. So with that in mind, Mushroom Hill may be at the bottom of A tier, but that is not a bad thing in the slightest. I think this zone does just about everything right. It has the high speed action, beautiful level environments, and some decent boss fights. My favorite part about this zone is when the level aesthetic completely changes in the second act, giving it some autumn vibes to it. It's one of my favorite zone transitions that Sonic has to offer. For context, starting with Sonic the Hedgehog 3, zones start transitioning into different environments halfway through. Which means that actual acts within a zone can look completely different from one another. Sonic 3 began that trend, and oh boy, do I love it. I just love autumn and winter, they're just such cozy times of the year and we finally got it in a Sonic game, you gotta love it. Anyways, moving on. Okay, the next zone is Metallic Madness from Sonic CD. This is a great final level, it still has the high speed action that Sonic is known for, and it has a pretty intimidating level aesthetic. This zone only has one generator per level without any Metal Sonic holograms which would leave you to believe that these levels are short with not a lot of exploration. Except that's where you're wrong. The levels are not short, and you still explore a lot to reach the end of the stage. It's a great Sonic CD stage. My only issue is that the spike placements can be a bit brutal at times. Like they just went ham on slapping spikes everywhere. I have grown to appreciate this zone despite the spikes, but I can still see why others may dislike it. So, I think it's fair to put Metallic Madness in the A tier. Next up, we have Carnival Night Zone from Sonic the Hedgehog 3. The best level that I hate. Yeah, this zone sucks. But it's also good. But it also sucks. I love Carnival Night Zone. This zone rocks. But sometimes it do kinda annoy me. For example, Collision detection has always been wacky in this zone. Sure, Sonic Origins may have made it worse, but I still vividly remember the original killing me at times from Broken Collision. So, Broken Collision, that is a big no-no that is not a good feature, but other than that, the level is amazing. It has a nice aesthetic with a great soundtrack to accompany you, but what I really enjoyed about this zone was all the exploration that there were in these levels. Like, exploring levels have always been a part of Sonic 3. However, Carnival Night actually push you to really utilize the gimmicks of the level to explore certain aspects. You could pop balloons to get to higher ground, or you could use a Barrel of Doom to find hidden goodies. It's just something I really appreciated that I've always noticed. So yeah, Carnival Night Zone is awesome, but it also sucks. Next on the chopping block is Aquatic Ruin from Sonic the Hedgehog 2. This zone is pretty cool. It's your typical water level that is fun and interesting and slow paced. However, what makes Aquatic Ruin so special is that in this water level, you can avoid the water entirely, meaning that you can turn this water level into a level on land, and that's dope. My only issue with this level is that some of the enemy placements can get in the way, but if you're an experienced player, you should be fine. It's not as bad as the slicers, so don't worry. Anyways, let's move on. The next zone we have is Marble Garden Zone from Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Marble Garden is a very mixed zone. You either really like it, or you think it's one of the weaker Sonic 3 levels. Personally, I never had an issue with this zone, so when I heard that some people didn't like it, I was a little caught off guard by that. I always thought that the gimmicks were well made, and the level had a nice blend of high speed action and platforming gameplay. But the coolest thing about this stage was the setting. I think this setting is gorgeous, and with the music here to accompany it, it all just makes it very memorable to me. I always love seeing all the different environments that the Sonic series had to offer. 
and seeing the pixelated backgrounds of Marble Garden really makes my imagination run wild. I love the visuals and the overall atmosphere of this stage. It's also very nostalgic for me because when I was young, I would always quit on this level when playing Mega Collection. So yeah, I remember this zone very vividly and now that I'm older and I can actually play through the zone, I can say it's actually a pretty good zone. All right, here is your first Sonic Mania zone. We have Mirage Saloon Zone. Now hear me out, drop your pitchforks, allow me to explain. Mirage Saloon has a great soundtrack, great visuals, 10 out of 10 level design, it doesn't have any annoying gimmicks or any annoying enemy placements at all. It is a fantastic level, except the fact that the first act is a side-scroller stage. This tornado event is the one level in Sonic Mania that I go on autopilot when playing. I do not like side-scroller stages being in Sonic games. They never turn out fun, and in the end, it just takes away from the experience. However, I wouldn't be as upset if the side-scroller stage had platforming instead of being a tornado. I do have a guilty pleasure with the side-scrolling stages in Sonic 1 Game Gear, so if they at least give us something to platform on, I probably wouldn't be complaining as much. But no, they just give us a plane to roll around on for two minutes straight. Yeah. Such a missed opportunity too, because Act 2 of this zone is legitimately close to being perfect and would be an easy SS tier. However, this side-scroller stage just drags on for too long and I'm not a fan of it. It's not fun. That That's all I gotta say about it. So I'm going to put Mirage Saloon in the A tier because of it. I feel like that's a fair rating. Okay, the next zone we have is Oil Ocean Zone from Sonic the Hedgehog 2. This is a pretty big hot take, I know. A lot of players do not like Oil Ocean Zone, but all I have to say to those guys is skill issue. Oil Ocean is a great level, especially for Sonic the Hedgehog 2. I've always found Sonic 2 to be very punishing in its level design, but what made the game so fun was that after replaying it over and over and again, eventually you stop sucking at the game you actually get good. So as someone who no longer struggles with Oil Ocean, I consider this a fun zone, and honestly, it's a good way of seeing how far I've come as a player. So you know what? This zone is actually pretty good. You're just not Pog. All right, so the next zone is Flying Battery from Sonic Mania. Flying Battery got a bit of an improvement in Sonic Mania. This zone has better enemy placements and less annoying spikes being thrown everywhere. However, I have one issue with this zone, and it's the Act 2 boss fight. There is nothing wrong with the boss fight. It's a cool designed boss, and I'm probably just complaining about nothing, but I feel like he's a bit too slow. Like, it takes too long to defeat the Act 2 boss here, and I just don't like that. I know it's a very stupid issue, but that's why it's in the A tier. Next up, we have Casino Night Zone, one of the most loved Sonic the Hedgehog 2 zones. I think Casino Night Zone is a great zone, which is surprising to say because I used to hate this zone. I used to think that Casino Night had too much going on and that there was too much bouncing enemies and random gimmicks spread out through the level. But after becoming more experienced like an Omega Chad, I've found it to be really fun to speedrun this level. Just like every other Sonic 2 level, it's very fast paced if you're good at the game. Also, just gonna put this out there, the soundtrack is a bop. It is good. Other than that, it is a perfectly fine zone. Okay, next up is Death Egg Zone from Sonic the Hedgehog 3. This is the last zone in Sonic 3, and thankfully this time, they didn't sacrifice the high-speed action for basic platforming. This time around, the zone has a nice blend of the two elements. The one critique I have of this zone is that the boss fights suck. The first one is annoying and I always use Hypersonic to beat it because I just don't want to deal with it. And the second one just takes way too long to defeat. Although it's not the biggest deal in the world because I can go Hypersonic for the first boss fight and then for the second boss. While it is slow, I can push through it because that's what I've always done. It's just you gotta push through it, man. Other than that, it's a pretty cool zone nonetheless. Finally, the zone going to the top of the A tier is Stardust Speedway from Sonic CD. Okay, 
So, some people consider Stardust Speedway to be the best Sonic CD zone. I disagree just a tad bit. I think people mostly enjoy Stardust Speedway because it's less about using gimmicks and level design to manipulate and explore the level, and more about just going fast and taking different pathways to find generators. You see, that's my one issue with this zone. It doesn't take as much brains to explore the level this time around. For example, if I just took a different pathway and held forward until I found a generator, that just doesn't feel like I earned it fully. Whereas in previous levels, I really had to navigate my surroundings and plan out where I was going to time travel or reach certain parts throughout the level. In Stardust Speedway, I just have to take the right path and jump on a spring or two. It's still fun, but not perfect. I will say that the Metal Sonic boss fight is awesome and is definitely one of my favorite Sonic boss fights. It's just so cool to design a boss fight around a race in a Sonic game. It's just a brilliant idea. So, in conclusion, Stardust Speedway will be sitting at the top of the A tier. Starting off the S tier, we have Lava Reef Zone from Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Lava Reef is, in my opinion, when the Sonic and Knuckles half of Sonic 3 started making a comeback. Just like Mushroom Hill, the highlight of this stage is how it transitions into something completely different. At the beginning, it's this fiery, deep cave, and by the second act, it turns into this beautiful, crystallized cave with molten hot lava under you. It's truly a marvelous thing to look at. Overall, the zone is well designed, there was no stupid gimmicks, it was fast paced, and there was a nice bit of platforming too. Lava Reef was inoffensive and was a great comeback for Sonic 3. Next up, we have Chemical Plant from Sonic the Hedgehog 2. This zone is great for longtime players of Sonic 2, although it kinda sucks for new players. For new players, they might find themselves drowning, falling into death pits, or getting killed by the boss fight. While only being the second zone in the game, it's much more challenging than both Aquatic Ruin and Casino Night. So, I can see why some people stop playing once they reach Chemical Plant. As a new player, it's certainly a strange difficulty curve that you see when playing Sonic 2. However, for players who have experienced Sonic 2, this zone is just phenomenal. It's nothing but high-speed action in this zone, and when I say that, I mean it. Like, Chemical Plant might just be one of, if not, the fastest-paced Sonic zone of all time. This level does not stop. It will keep pushing you forward at blitzing speeds until you eventually finish the level. Stages like Chemical Plant remind me that Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is oddly the fastest-paced classic Sonic game, which you wouldn't really expect that since Sonic 3 and Sonic Mania are so well-regarded within the Sonic community. Maybe that's why some people prefer it over Sonic 3 and Mania. The next zone we have is Oil Ocean Zone from Sonic Mania. So imagine taking Oil Ocean from Sonic 2, which was already good, and upgrading its level design to have much more exploration and better gimmicks. That's why Oil Ocean from Sonic Mania is sweet. They also made a pretty cool reference to Some Call Me Johnny's old Sonic the Hedgehog 2 review by allowing you to light the entire Oil Ocean on fire. I don't actually know if it was a reference to his original SGB review, but I do know that it is a wild coincidence at the very least. Either way, this zone is way past cool. Alright, next up we have Tidal Tempest from Sonic CD. Tidal Tempest is likely not most people's desired water level. However, I still think this zone is fantastic. Unlike Labyrinth Zone, the level design here is actually well thought out. You can either take the higher pathway which avoids water completely, or you can take the pathway down below which is still relatively fast paced despite being underwater. This zone is not plagued with horrible enemy placement, and its level design underwater actually supports moving fast. To top off everything, you have one of the simplest generator placements out of any Sonic CD stage. Which is great, because it probably wouldn't work out too well if they tried forcing convoluted level design into this set of levels. And I haven't even mentioned how the soundtrack is just perfection, but you already knew this, it's Sonic CD. Tidal Tempest is awesome. Anyways, let's move on. One water level that happens to be better than Tidal Tempest is Hydro City Zone from Sonic the Hedgehog 3. 
Hydro City, or otherwise known as Hydrocity, is what some may consider the only good water level from a classic Sonic game. This is because no matter if you are on land or underwater, you will be going through this zone at blitzing speeds. It's as if Sonic Team understood the criticism people had for water levels being too slow and said screw it. Let's just make the underwater sections have a ton of slopes and terrain to push Sonic to be as fast as he is on land. They made an actual good water level. Or at the least, a universally appreciated water level. And is the reason why Sonic 3 is the only Sonic game that I was able to get past the second zone on when I was young. That should go to show how much of a banger Sonic zone this one was. The next zone is Emerald Hill Zone from Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Emerald Hill Zone was a great way to start off Sonic 2. As previously mentioned, Sonic 2 is the fastest paced classic Sonic game. So what better way to start it off than to give the player an insanely fast zone with speed boots right off the bat. It's brilliant. A good intro stage is supposed to show you what to expect from the rest of the game. And Emerald Hill Zone is great at showing that. Next up we have Mystic Cave Zone. I think Mystic Cave Zone is a straight vibe. It's a very unique zone that goes for the good old spooky approach which was only attempted by two zones. This one and Sandopolis. I really dig haunted Sonic levels. I would love to see a haunted mansion level in a classic Sonic game, similar to Mystic Mansion from Sonic Heroes. Unfortunately, I don't think we'll ever see that day. Nonetheless, this zone is wild. It has a nice blend of platforming and high speed action, as well as some secrets that you can find such as Hidden Palace Zone by falling into a death pit right here. If I was to rank Hidden Palace, it would probably be in the A tier for having only one act. Anyways, Mystic Cave Zone is very much fire. Woohoo! We're back to intro levels with Green Hill Zone from Sonic the Hedgehog. Green Hill Zone was the first Sonic level ever created and it makes one great first impression. Green Hill is all about going fast with a tad bit of exploration. Oddly enough, I actually really enjoy Sonic 1's high speed levels. With Green Hill Zone, it's fast like Emerald Hill Zone, but exploring and collecting rings feels a lot more condensed here. In Sonic 2, I always felt like I wanted to go at fast speeds constantly. But with Sonic 1, I could go fast and then stop at times to go explore and find some rings or a shield to collect. This formula was groundbreaking, and it's not surprising as to why Sonic is as successful as he is. Unfortunately, only one other zone followed this high-speed formula. And that zone is Starlight Zone. This zone is designed very similarly to Green Hill Zone. You got the high-speed action with a nice bit of exploration, except... This time around, I don't know if Starlight is necessarily a more fun zone than Green Hill Zone. So then why did I put it above Green Hill? Two reasons. Number one, atmosphere. It's a city stage that takes place at night with some really chill music. The music is so chill that I decided to make my outro music to my videos a remix of this song. Number two, it's the only good zone besides Green Hill Zone. When you are playing through Marble, Spring Yard, and Labyrinth Zone, it gets very exhausting. But once you reach Starlight Zone, it's such a nice breath of fresh air to the point that it feels much more special than Green Hill Zone. Because I had to suffer through a lot to get to Starlight Zone. Knowing that Starlight Zone is off in the distance makes playing Sonic 1 a lot more bearable because at least I know there's a good stage coming up. Alright, I'm about to seem like a massive hypocrite for this one. The next zone in the S tier is Sky Sanctuary from Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Now yes, there is only one act, but guess what? I'm biased! Sky Sanctuary is such a memorable moment when playing Sonic 3, especially when it's your first time. You're playing on this sky temple that's slowly falling apart as you climb it, and you keep fighting various mecha Sonic bosses while you're at it. Sure, it's just one act, but it's extremely based. It's also the turning point in Sonic 3's story where Knuckles realizes that he's gonna have to work with Sonic and Tails so he can get the Master Emerald back. I remember wanting to reach this zone so badly when I was young because I thought it looked so cool. I could never get to it though because I vastly preferred the first half of Sonic 3 back then. But that was only because I never got to the second half of Sonic Knuckles. If I did that, 
then I would have known that there was some fire in the game. Sky Sanctuary is awesome and even Sonic Team knows this because it's the zone that was used to represent Sonic 3 in Sonic Generations and uh, more recently, Sonic Frontiers, although I'm kind of disappointed about that. Anyways, Sky Sanctuary is fire. What else can I say? Finally, the last zone in the S tier is Launch Base from Sonic the Hedgehog 3. This zone is admittedly confusing on your first playthrough of the stage. Sometimes you might get lost, but if you're a long time player, it's no secret that this zone is awesome. Launch Base is a prime example of how you make challenging levels fun. Instead of slapping spikes and annoying enemies everywhere, what Launch Base does is it gives you enemies that you can prevent from hurting you if you have a good handling of how Sonic controls. For example, you have these spike enemies right here and if you were to just run right into them, you would lose all of your rings. Or, you could jump and time your insta-shield so that you actually kill the enemy. You see, I love that because they're not just an annoying slicer that you cannot avoid. It actually gives you an opportunity to save yourself if you're good at the game. Launch base is launch based. I rest my case. Bars. For the first zone in the SS tier, we have Stardust Speedway from Sonic Mania. This zone took Stardust Speedway from Sonic CD and transformed it into an even faster level with more fitting level design. Stardust Speedway in Sonic CD had the least exploration from all of the zones in that game. It was mostly focused on speed, so translating Stardust Speedway into Sonic Mania's level design was a perfect translation. This was what Stardust Speedway was always meant to be. And while I still prefer the Metal Sonic boss fight from Sonic CD, the one in Sonic Mania isn't too bad either. This zone was a vast improvement over the one in Sonic CD, and I feel that Stardust Speedway fits right at home with Sonic Mania. Next up, we have Palm Tree Panic from Sonic CD. Palm Tree Panic does what every other intro stage does. It introduces the player to how you're supposed to play the game. For Sonic CD's case, I think it succeeds quite well in that philosophy. The generator and metal Sonic placements within the level are not hidden at all. They are all in simple locations that don't require too much skill to reach them so you can destroy them. Which is great for the starting zone because Sonic CD is a very hard game to understand. And what Palm Tree Panic does is it sells you on the idea of exploring these levels, trying to find the generators and holograms, before throwing you into the wolves. The best way I can describe Sonic CD is a swimming pool. If you dive in, you'll be cold, screaming, drowning, but if you dip your feet into the water first, you can get a hang of things before taking a dive. You catch my drift? Palm Tree Panic is a great first stage to what some would consider a misunderstood gem of a game. Okay, next we have Metallic Madness from Sonic Mania. This zone is once again taking a pass zone and upgrading it to be a lot more enjoyable. In this version of Metallic Madness, it's a lot more fast paced and on top of that, it's not littered with punishing level design. Like sure, you have your fair share of spikes and blades, but nothing feels unfair in this zone. It feels like if I get hit by a spike, it's my fault that it happened, instead of just chucking spikes in the most inconvenient places. So in other words, Metallic Madness from Sonic Mania removes the fat and gives you a solid experience. The next zone we have is Chemical Plant from Sonic Mania. Okay, so once again, Sonic Mania took an older zone and made it better. This time around, Chemical Plant has more gimmicks and even has a new boss fight that is a direct reference to Puyo Puyo, or otherwise known as Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. The level also greatly improved on being less punishing to new players, so that's nice. There's not much to say here, it's just pretty much a better version of Chemical Plant. Okay, next up is Lava Reef Zone from Sonic Mania. Now talk about an improvement, Lava Reef was already fast in Sonic 3. However, Sonic Mania's Lava Reef feels much more faster. Like I feel like I'm zooming past this level and it feels super satisfying. Not to even mention the really cool boss fight on Act 2. Like, man, they got really creative with some of these bosses. Which also is a notable mention. The boss fights in Sonic Mania's Lava Reef are much more fast paced than the boss fights in Sonic 3's Lava Reef. It results in the zone being a lot more fast paced and I dig that in a Sonic game. So with all things considered, 
I think I prefer Sonic Mania's Lava Reef a bit more. All right, now we have the best final zone of any Sonic game. That is Titanic Monarch from Sonic Mania. Wow, I am realizing that there is a lot of Sonic Mania here. Yeah, it's going to be very oversaturated from here on out. Anyways, I believe Titanic Monarch is the best final zone in a Sonic game because it doesn't sacrifice anything to be more difficult. With Scrap Rain Zone, you had some mediocre levels followed by a bad level. Sonic 2 had a lot less speed focus level design due to the focus on platforming over a death pit. Sonic CD placed a bunch of annoying spikes everywhere, and Sonic 3 had slow boss fights. Titanic Monarch is still a fast zone from beginning to end. There are slopes everywhere, the enemy placement is well balanced, and the final boss, while being pretty slow paced, is still a really cool fight. Titanic Monarch is a perfect example on how you make a final zone, and that's why it's sitting at the SS tier. Next up, we have Angel Island Zone from Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Now, something I really love about Angel Island Zone is how it's crucial to setting up the rest of the game for you. When I'm playing through this zone, there are four giant rings I have to get before leaving, except how I get to those giant rings is all up to me. So what's cool about Angel Island Zone is that you have to plan out where you're gonna go and what pathways you're gonna take so that you can hit all of the giant rings. It reminds me a lot of playing Sonic CD because you have to plan out a lot of your pathways in that game, and that might be a good reason why I enjoy this zone. Alright, back to Sonic Mania. The next zone we have is Studioopolis. This zone and one other were the highlights of new zones being added to Sonic Mania, and it's clear as to why. This zone is dope, it's colorful, new, and most importantly, it feels like a Sonic location. What I really liked about this zone is that it kinda acts as the casino level of Sonic Mania, and yet, this is the most lively casino type level in the entire series. There's so many easter eggs and tiny details littered all over the place. Look, if you played Sonic Mania, you know the zone is cool. I don't even have to explain it. Although, seeing the new zones like this does tell us that if Christian Wyatt wanted to make a fully original classic Sonic game, he definitely could. Next up, we have Hydro City Zone from Sonic Mania. Hydro City from Sonic Mania isn't a massive difference from the iteration present in Sonic 3. It's still a very fast water level with a ton of verticality to it. However, what's different about this Hydro City is that they just added more to the zone. More gimmicks that are interesting to screw around with. You get to float around in a bubble like in the Game Gear games, and you can even ride on a boat. But even better, one of the boss fights consists of you taking over Dr. Robotnik's Eggmobile, and that is so cool. So while it may seem like the differences are a bit more nuanced, I would argue that the differences make a great new version of Hydro City, thus giving Sonic Mania the upper hand for just simply adding more to it. So, in conclusion, Hydro City, Hydrocity, Hydricity, Hydri- it's good. Okay, now we have Green Hill Zone from Sonic Mania. Green Hill is a brilliantly designed zone, especially Act 2. You see, Green Hill Zone is much like Angel Island Zone from Sonic 3. For me, I try to collect all of the giant rings before progressing, which means once again, I have to plan out which pathways I'm going to take to get to said giant rings. Again, there's some parallels from Sonic CD here in the level design. Except what makes this zone so much more fun is that it takes the concept of Angel Island being this zone for you to explore for giant rings, and expands the level design, especially Act 2. In Act 2, the level is much larger vertically, which means that there are much more pathways for you to explore than Angel Island. It really feels like a Sonic CD and Sonic 3 level hybrid. It's that cool. There's so many hidden secrets and cool stuff to find around Green Hill Zone, which makes it one of the best Sonic Zones in my opinion. What? Did someone say Sonic the Hedgehog 2? Yeah, that's right, a Sonic the Hedgehog 2 Zone actually did make it into the SS tier, which is surprising. Now, I consider Sonic the Hedgehog 2 Zones to be very well designed, and can at times be more fun than Sonic 3 and Sonic Mania Zones. However, I still think that Sonic 3 and Sonic Mania overpower Sonic 2 for the most part. Except for one zone. Hilltop Zone. Why do I like this zone so much? I, I couldn't tell you, man. I just love the platforming in this level and just how fast-paced it is. 
It's just so much fun to play this level, and I always feel sad when I complete it too fast. Like, I want to stay in the level. I do like the level aesthetic and the enemies. I think it all looks gorgeous too, but the main reason why I enjoy this zone is the platforming. It feels like Wing Fortress done right, where it has that perfect blend of slopes and fast-paced platforming that I really like. I'm very biased in this pick, I know, but it's still awesome nonetheless, I don't care. Alright, the next zone we have is Quartz Quadrant from Sonic CD. Whew! Where do I begin? This zone has... Oh! Oh! Phenomenal music! Great visuals and a decent boss! But what's so cool about Quartz Quadrant is planning how you're going to destroy all of the generators and the holograms. It's just so much fun. You have the bottom path, which is pretty much a straight line with enemies and obstacles. Then you have a jungle gym above you, which may contain a generator or a hologram for you to destroy. I just found going back and forth with this level design to be very smooth, and with the enemies scattered everywhere, I really have to plan out how I'm going to go about time traveling or reaching certain generators. I love this zone. Because it starts out as a very challenging zone for players to find generators and holograms, but once you memorize the locations, you can speedrun this level through so many different pathways that you feel like a chad once you've done so. Such a good Sonic CD level, and you know what, I forgot one thing, this level gives off massive Dragon Ball vibes, and just for that, it deserves SS tier, alright? It is fire. Next up, we have Collision Chaos from Sonic CD the final Sonic CD zone in this tier list. Collision Chaos is a showcase of the best that Sonic CD has to offer. The amount of ways you can utilize the level design to travel through time here is insane. What's even cooler is that the generator and hologram placements in this zone all require some skill with using Sonic's rolling physics to gain momentum. There are so many ways you can go about completing this level successfully. It feels like a similar design philosophy to Super Mario 64, where in that game, you could also tackle your main objectives in any way you wanted to. Sonic CD is all about that, and Collision Chaos is a prime example of this in action. Also, the soundtrack goes so hoo, hoo, hard. In conclusion, this zone is certified based. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, time for the penultimate best Sonic zone. We have Press Garden Zone from Sonic Mania. Press Garden is bliss, and it has my favorite level transition from a classic Sonic game. You start out in this wacky printing house as creating thousands of newspapers, which then leads into a snowy wasteland with ice, cool boss fights, and oh, oh man, those cherry blossom trees. This zone looks beautiful. I'm saying this again, this is an example of what Christian Wyatt and his team could do if given the ability to make a fully original 2D Sonic game. The level has everything, high speed action, great atmosphere, fair share of platforming, and a ton of amazing gimmicks are unique to each of the acts. In Act 2, you see completely different gimmicks from Act 1, that is, that, that is insane to me. You can get frozen, and then you just start rolling through the level design like it's nothing. I, I love this zone. This is probably the best designed Sonic zone I have ever played. Although, there is one more zone on this tier list. Let's talk about it. The number one best zone, in my opinion, is Ice Cap from Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Why do I like Ice Cap over Press Garden? Well, here's a disclaimer once again. I'm biased. I have sentimental value within Ice Cap Zone. You see, when I was younger, I was a Nintendo kid who had a GameCube and a Wii. I've always enjoyed Sonic Mega Collection, I would play it very often. Although, I never really got past the second act on any of the games, with the minor exception of Sonic 3. I always knew that Ice Cap was a level in Sonic 3, and I always loved snow levels in video games. I don't really know where my love for snow levels came from. Maybe it has a lot to do with it snowing a lot where I live, or it could even funnily enough be because of Mario himself. I remember playing New Super Mario Bros. Wii with my brother and I always loved it when we reached the snow level. So one day, when I was very young, I decided that I was going to reach the snow level in Sonic 3, that being Ice Cap. I was going to push through this game with every fiber in my being until I eventually reached this zone. Eventually though, late at night, 
I reach Ice Cap Zone, and it was not just a very memorable moment for my love of Sonic, but more so, it was a memorable moment for me when it came to gaming in general. Because I was no longer just playing games to pass time or for mild entertainment. I was playing games to achieve something. Sonic 3 Ice Cap was the furthest I have ever gone into a Sonic game at the time. That's the biggest reason why I love and adore Ice Cap Zone. I mean, the snowboarding section is also dope and it has the typical Sonic 3 level design, so that also makes it a very well made zone too. Oh, and I forgot, the music shredded heat. It was straight fire, alright? Oh yeah, Sonic Origins, why did you do this to me? But with that said guys, that was my tier list for all classic Sonic games. I can already tell that this is going to be a very long video, so I'm sorry if this took a while to release. Anyways, remember, this was all for fun and this is my personal opinion. We all have different reasons to like or dislike certain aspects of these games. It's completely normal. So let me know what you guys thought about this tier list. Was I pretty accurate or was I way off? Just let me know. Or you guys could just tell me how you would rank them or you can just call me some mean name in the comments. I, I like all comments even, you know, I, I like some of these roasts that you guys give me. So either way, I'm entertained by you guys. I'm gonna love reading comments on this video, whether it's negative or positive. So with everything all wrapped up, I will see you all soon. I love you guys, adios. My channel members are JNXV, Orion Pack, Snix, Ethan K78, Jonya Rings, Epic Gaming with George, Slagman715, Archer XYZ, Psych Up, Thomas One Ride, Chip Chip Chop, Escape Sonic Pip, The Squeaker Nerd, Super Shex, Boom Sonic, Extreme, Super Saiyan Sonic. Thank you all for supporting channel. Make sure to click one of the end card screen videos here. Love you guys. Peace out.